Okay, so the year was 2003, and I was hungover. And I opened up my RSS reader, it was 2003, and I read an article in the New York Times with a quote from a technologist that really infuriated me. I, I know, what a concept. Uh, it was, Google combined with Wi-Fi is a little bit like God. Now, I'm not religious at all, but there was something about the hubris that annoyed me, and so I decided to write a rant in response. Uh, and I called it, The Internet Is Shit. And I made a web page for this uh, and put it online. And uh, essentially, I was trolling the internet on the internet with a web page. Uh, and, you know, I thought maybe a few people would see it. What I didn't know was that Google itself would turn it into an epic troll. Because within five weeks, it was the top result on Google for the word shit for about four years. <laughs> I received more than 11 million unique visitors uh, on this rant. So now I work for the Coral Project, uh, Mozilla Project, and one of the things that we're doing actually is to build tools to make trolls less visible on news sites. So it's kind of an irony in, in now turning on, on my own methods. And really we've been looking more deeply at what trolls are and how they behave. Now, trolls are people who take deliberately extreme positions and actions in order to provoke reactions. Uh, and most commonly, they will target those who already suffer from systemic bias due to race, class, gender, sexual orientation, and so on. It's something I'm sure you're very familiar with on the comment spaces of your news sites in general. It's something the news industry really suffers with. So here are a few lines that I've grabbed from news websites. Uh, and, and really, you know, should single women be allowed to vote? Uh, ben Carson's as dumb as a bag of rocks, and, and so on. None of this will be very surprising to, to any of you in the room. Uh, you know, Philadelphia is a second-rate stopover city, and so on. We have race, class, gender, all, all listed here. Oh, <laughs> there's something I forgot to tell you. Um, these lines, they are all from news websites, they're not from the comments. <laughs> these are all from journalists. And a lot of the actions of journalists we're seeing right now in the comment spaces on their own websites would be moderated out. And yet, because they're above the line, they get the focus. And in fact, these are the hate reads, these are the clickbaits, these are the things that journalism is increasingly becoming known for. And this is getting noticed. An attorney called C.P. Lawrence, uh, in, uh, when, during the whole Ferguson uh, um, issue that was going on, uh, he created the if they gunned me down hashtag. And this was really a reaction to what was seen as effectively the media taking African American people's stories and turning them into trolling them, essentially, in saying, uh, these people are thugs. It's in a ridiculous extreme position. And Dr. Whitney Phillips, in her recent book, saying, really, the difference isn't behavior. The difference is why they're doing it. The media and the trolls are doing the same things. So journalists complain to me about the behavior in the comment space when really they are modeling exactly the same behavior in many, many cases. It's bad behavior with no consequences that gets repeated over and over again. Now, I think there's a reason for this. When I talk to journalists about community as part of our job, they talk about community as them over there. If you think about communities around news as those people, then you feel less responsible for the consequences of your actions. If you think about journalism communities as us, if you think about the journalist as parts of communities, the fact checker, the verifier, and, and so on, but within this space, then the consequences of your actions have very real difference. But yet, if journalists look just like white men, then we're never going to be reflecting the communities who are looking back at us and saying, well, of course you don't reflect us. Of course you're not being responsible. Of course what you're saying doesn't fit with the way we are. This is the age of the epic troll. This is a golden age for trolls. We're seeing trolls getting rewarded, getting influence, getting money, getting rewarded. And a lot of the metrics that trolls use and look for themselves, attention, audience, likes, are the same metrics that we're trying to chase. And what we're doing in doing so is modeling identical behavior. So yes, we can build and we will be building tools to make bad behavior in comment spaces less visible. But if we really want to tackle trolling, then we also have to point the finger at ourselves. Thank you.